There we go. Hello, party people, and welcome to Office Hours. For some reason, my little button isn't unmuting uh, my microphone when I go pop into here. It's doing everything else right. It's just not unmuting my microphone. I'll have to go figure that out after the break. Uh, Octail, welcome to the stream. So Octail says, first time in the stream, long time follower. Grant has been very helpful in setting up plenty of SQL servers. Good. That is great to hear. We got SQL Dev DBA. Thank you for the Tier 1 subscription. Good to see DK Kimbo in here again as well. Um, I usually look at the office hours questions before we start uh, just to make sure. Oh, hello, uh, Renegade. <coughs> just to make sure that we don't have anything like super trolly in there or things that are completely off topic that I don't want anything to do with answering. Like the question about like how is AI going to affect databases? I get that like multiple times a week and I'm like, I'm not answering that anymore. I've done it before. Although I get why people uh, continue to ask that because it's a cool topic. Um, but so I went in through the, the questions this morning before I went and started streaming, and there's actually great ones in here. Uh, DK Kimbo said you could have AI answer it. I actually did that too. I did a stream, uh, it's probably like four or five months ago now, where I threw the questions into uh, chat GPT, and I let them answer them. Chat GPT-4 is way better, especially the Turbo, I will say. I used that. Uh, Eve and I were talking about how AI affects database administrators, not databases, but da database administrators. And I said, let me show you how good Chat GPT-4 has gotten. And I, what was it that I, I asked it? Um, I can't remember what the question was, but I said, write the answer uh, in the form of Brent Ozar discussing it. And it was something completely, un it was like housing or something, and it was completely unrelated to databases. And Chat GPT-4 Turbo picked up that I talk about database performance tuning. It kept throwing in things about performance tuning in there. It threw in things about cars. Um, then it was kind of funny. It said, uh, or Eve said, why don't you have it ask, uh, or ask it what Brent's three recommended cars were? Um, are right now? And I was like, oh, that's a really good question. And so it picked Porsche 911. And it talked about what was good about Porsche 911s. I was like, that's really cool. 911s are on the expensive side, but okay, whatever. It picked another car, which I was like, okay, that's actually right up my alley. And then the third one it picked was Teslas, and it was uh, like glowing about how good Teslas are. And I'm like, boy, okay, no, you lost me right there. And that, that, so for those of you who don't know, I'm, I'm very anti-Tesla. It's uh, too much money for the new ones. It's way too much money given the horrific build quality uh, and, the, the, of course, the problems with Elon Musk as well. But, uh, but I found it very funny that it, that it just wrote this glowing endorsement in my voice of Tesla. So I was like, okay, well, hit or miss. It's like Chad GPT. It's, you know, two-thirds of the time it's amazing. One-third of the time it's hallucinating and smoking crack. Um, SQL Dev DBA says, uh, considering that a bunch of OpenAI staff just went to Microsoft, that was awesome. I was so excited to see that because if there's one company that I think would do a really good job, there are a few companies that I think would do a really good job of stewarding that kind of knowledge and investigating the necessary cash for it. Microsoft is just awesome, if uh, an awesome fit for the OpenAI staff. Uh, it was just genius. I, I love it because there's so much business uh, sense that goes into that. So it's really amazing. So let's go take a look at what the first, uh, the top voted question was. So the top voted question comes from Dislike Entity Framework, and they say, we inherited a nine terabyte table with a unique identifier as a clustered index. Another column is an identity, it's just not needed. How can we quickly fix this? Fix what? What do you think your end users are going to notice that's broken? I think what happened was, is you probably read a few like backseat uh, coaching type articles where people said clustered indexes is good, is bad, bad, bad. But you haven't actually tested it out to prove that your end result is going to be better. And you know what? It's not. Go check it and find out. Go move the, the take another development copy of the database, move the indexes over the way that you want them, regardless of however long it takes, and measure the difference in query performance. 
And if you can't measure a difference, you're going down the wrong track. Next up, let's see here. Mailbox asks, I've noticed more job listings for the Postgres DBA or data professional on some job site. This is a weird thing. Many of these index or listings ask that you be able to write a stored procedure or translate a legacy stored procedure uh, over to Postgres. Is the job of DBA becoming broader or do you think these are mistitled? No, for 20 years, people haven't understood what DBA is, or I, I don't want to say haven't understood, I should say have had any number of des, uh, uh, descriptions on what DBA actually does, to the point where Janice Griffith says uh, DBA stands for does about anything. You'll always see that, uh, just as you'll see programmer definitions uh, that or developer definitions that say must be able to lift 30 pounds. Like, well, why? What are you going to be doing with that? Next up, AI says, you wrote about Postgres licensing. As compute keeps getting cheaper, uh, at, at what point will skills in tuning and execution plans become redundant because you just get a big enough hardware hammer uh, so that the engine can work their way through it? I think this is a wonderful question because I think the time is approaching. I don't think it's this year. I don't think it's three years from now. It's probably not even five years from now. But there will be a point where good hardware is so cheap that more queries will be able to be processed without tuning at a larger scale. The flip side of that is data keeps growing larger, especially in the age of AI. Hey, Beanie, you want to come up and say hi? Come on over here. Come over here. Hey, how you doing, little fella? He just walked in walked into the office so I'll bring him online for a minute here um, I think it's you know data continues to get larger uh, so it's only a matter of time until more and more of us are dealing with 5 terabyte 10 terabyte 20 terabyte databases DK Kimbo says CPU isn't cheap in the cloud though throwing horsepower at it gets pretty expensive DK Kimbo check out my recent article on the blog about how uh, Microsoft SQL Server licensing is overpriced and I talk about how you can get really amazing CPU power hardware in the cloud really inexpensively once you stop paying the SQL Server licensing um, I, I think to some extent what DK Kimbo says is related in that uh, I don't think SQL Server is going to get cheap enough that that won't matter, but I think for other platforms it will. What do you think, big man? You agree? You agree? He's really lonely around the house today because uh, Eve just flew out for a month in China. So Eve just got her green card so she could go take off and come back to the United States. And uh, so she took off to go uh, to China for a month to go see her family. So I am now in charge of Beanie for the next month. Yeah, good boy. See what we got next. Next up, we have uh, Mailbox says, are there any OLAP database management systems that can compete performance-wise with SQL Server? Let me turn that around, and I'm going to ask it the other way. Can SQL Server compete with any databases that were designed to be analytics? I don't think so. I don't think SQL Server can cost competitively. I think when you take the kinds of uh, analytic databases, and when I say analytics, I usually mean multiple terabytes, like think 5, 10, 20 terabytes worth of data. Those analytic platforms are, are tend to be better performant and more bang for the buck. Jim Van Allen uh, subscribed with Prime. I don't know why it's saying, oh good, it's saying you're a renewal. Jim, thank you for the nine months worth of Prime there. Next up, Ren asks, why does Management Studio's query plan show scalar UDFs in estimated query plans, but not in actual query plans? This is a great question, but it's a why question. And why questions can really only be answered by Microsoft. 
I don't know why they chose to do it the way that they do. I would guess development resources, like that they just didn't get enough development resources to do the things that they wanted to do. Because, of course, the whole world is full of uh, uh, people who have great ideas about what they think that SQL Server should do, uh, but they don't necessarily have money uh, attached to those ideas. It's not like they're going to spend more money on SQL Server when that feature gets done. Uh, so I, I, would, I would hazard a guess that just that there's not enough of an ROI and fixing that problem. I would be remiss if I didn't mention that SQL Server 2019 and newer can, may not, but can show uh, uh, scalar functions if they inline them. It's just not guaranteed. It has all kinds of gotchas there. DK Kimbo says, I will give them one crisp $20 bill to develop a single table restore process. DK Kimbo, I will match your $20. Uh, Lori says, what are the top ways that AI will affect SQL DBAs? The way that I'd answer that is make a list of the things that you do on a daily basis and then go try to do those things with AI. That'll tell you whether or not AI is going to affect your future. Because I'm sure that there are probably people out there who do have things or who do things on a daily basis that AI uh, can improve. Next up, man, right said Fred uh, has a really good question. Is there a good way to identify indexes with hot columns, columns that change all the time? Right said Fred probably uh, recently attended my How to Think Like the Engine class where we talk about that. I, Fred, I don't know of a way. You can gauge which indexes have more rights than others. That'll then tell you which indexes have hotter columns on them, but it won't tell you which columns are hot, <coughs> meaning which columns change all the time. Normally, I can glance at the index and just know customer balance, quantity and stock, things like that. Um, but not all columns are like that, like you may have an ERP system where the columns are cryptically named, but usually you can tell as a human. Next up, oh, it's another good one. SQL Bob says, "Hi, do you how do you, or do you hide your politics at work?" The answer for that one is yes. How do you avoid getting roped into a political discussion? He says, uh, "I have a coworker who's constantly trying to get a rise out of his fellow coworkers." The way that I think of it is, it's exactly like sports. There are lots of people out there who love sports. Oh, did you see what the local team did this weekend? Oh, man, I tell you what, they really did the thing with the ball and the hoop and the goal thing. Man, those points were unbelievable. I don't care. So because I just don't care, I'm not actively against it, but I'll just say, oh, that's cool. I really don't know anything about that. If you want to chat with somebody about it, you should talk to so-and-so over there. I'm just, It's just not my bag. But because I'm completely emotionless with it, and I support if you want to go watch the sports ball, that's totally cool. Um, I, I get into Dead by Daylight, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll immediately turn around and be like, oh, no, but I was playing Dead by Daylight this whole weekend. You wouldn't believe they got the new killer Chucky and he can scamper under pallets. Let me show you, you know, because maybe they're interested in me and they want to know about things that will that they can discuss with me in order to build a bond. Um, so that's the quick, easy way is, you know, just say, oh, no, that thing I'm not really interested in. But let me show you something else that I'm really interested in. I treat politics that exact same way. I couldn't care less about what people are doing or different parties are doing. I have no control over that. It doesn't impact me for the most part on my day to day life. So that's how I handle it. Next up, Stonebreaker. <laughs> That's good, like Michael Stonebreaker. Uh, it says, does Azure SQL DB compare favorably with Aurora Postgres SQL for developing new applications? No, and I blogged about why. If you search on my blog for Aurora and Azure SQL DB, I explain the differences between them. Uh, uh, Aurora Postgres uh, SQL, for example, can scale up and down in milliseconds uh, and only charge you basically while queries are running uh, or AWS or um, uh, Azure SQL DB not even close takes minutes to scale up and down uh, so as a result you don't really get the savings that you do with Aurora 
Uh, Vitali asks, have you ever considered offering Office Hours additionally as a podcast? Yes, and we used to, actually. But the work involved with dumping out the audio, uploading it to a podcasting provider, writing the RSS notes, uh, doing the troubleshooting when that doesn't work, getting it in the various podcast stores, troubleshooting when that's a problem. We ended up having to, it was so much work that I didn't want to do it. And so we ended up um, outsourcing it. And I think it was costing us about $500 a month. I love y'all. I don't love you $500 a month, not for office hours. I already give so much of my own time. I already put it out on YouTube, on Twitch. We put it on the blog as well. But that is where I draw the line is having to spend more money on it. Inevitably, somebody's going to be like, well, you could do X, this, and this all yourself. I only just only have so many hours in the day. And so I aim for the biggest bang for the buck for it. It's not that I have anything against podcasts. If it was free and easy, if there was a service that just took YouTube videos and put them into all of the uh, podcast stores and made sure that that worked, I'd be fine with it. But like Jim Van Allen says, $500 is a lot of tequila. And of course, if I drink $500 worth of tequila a, a month, that will make me even less inclined to work than I am now, which is already quite a struggle. Uh, let's see. Then SQL Dev DBA says old office hours are still on YouTube, and that's great. That's true, too. Um, Jolene, Jolene, Jolene says, what is your opinion of scope, the database scope configuration, last query plan stats? Is it safe to turn on? It's safe to turn on, but it slows your database down, especially when you're dealing with thousands of queries per second. So the thing that I advise people is if you're actively troubleshooting performance tuning and parameter sniffing on a database, turn it on on that database. When you're done, turn it back off. But don't leave it on incurring overhead when you're not actively doing that work. Don't be like, ah, oh, no, I'm going to leave slow my database down because maybe next Thursday I'll have half an hour when I can work on this. Nah, don't just get your SQL Server as much speed as you can. Don't turn on extra stuff. <laughs> DK Kimbo says if Brent drank $500 worth of tequila, office hours would start to get very interesting. I in the So because Eve is gone, <laughs> I'm going to do an office hours from the hot tub in the next month or two. It probably won't be live. It'll probably be something because I don't think I can stream very. I'd have to drag a laptop out and all that, but I'll take a camera out and I guarantee you I'll have a drink in that one. Don't worry. You will not have to see me shirtless. I'm going to arrange the camera in a way that you'll see my head in the hot tub, but not much more than that. And then we'll do one more. Uh, uh, Zappy DBCC says, uh, hello, Brent. Do you often come across customers who haven't activated their query store in production? Yes, the vast majority, something like 60 to 70 percent of the databases out there that we see in SQL Constant Care at minimum still don't have a query store turned on. And when clients come to me for consulting, they almost never have query store turned on. Zappy says, if so, what do you advise them to do in particular with regards to risks of activating it? I tell people, Google for Aaron Stellato, E-R-I-N-S-T-E-L-L-A-T-O, -E 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 Aaron Stellato Query Store. Google for that. Watch her plural site training courses on that and read her blog posts on that. Because if you don't do what she says, it can slow your SQL Server down dramatically, especially in situations where you have the server getting flooded with unparameterized queries. Also, in those situations, when your server is flooded with unparameterized queries, Query Store does you almost no good because it doesn't catch those queries. It doesn't group them together because they're all one-offs. So it doesn't make a lot of sense. All right, so there you go. There's a whole handful of questions for office hours. Now I have to go uh, get back to work. I'm back Monday in the office. I'm going to spend some time in here today. Uh, then uh, well, that's about it. So I hope you all had fun, and I will see you all next time on Office Hours. Adios.